My papa is a client of Philip Morris, but today he has stage four lung cancer. Have you ever considered that Philip Morris is killing its best customers? I never realized the scale of the company, which includes Marlboro, the most expensive tobacco brand, Parliament, IQOS, and many, many others. However, you cannot create such a large scale brand without demand. And in order to create demand, people need to become addicted to cigarettes. It seems like fate itself offered the company a great chance at the very beginning. The First World War had just broken out. The soldiers' kit included cigarettes. It helped combatants to be stress resistant. As a result, it became the most popular product after food and weapons. Tobacco companies distributed cigarettes for free. It seemed so generous and patriotic. The fact is that after the war, soldiers were addicted to tobacco for the rest of their lives. While the business was already generating significant profits, Philip Morris was hungry for more customers and more money. To double its clients, he had to win over the female audience. For this purpose, Marlboro was created in 1923. You've probably heard of them because today they are the most popular cigarettes in the world. Back in the early days, they were promoted as being milder because of the filter. Therefore, people thought they did not cause much harm to the smoker's body. It was the perfect product to market among the female audience. But there was one problem. Women smoking in public places was prohibited by law, and some were even sentenced to imprisonment. Philip Morris used this law to its own advantage, exploiting the feminist movement. Yes, these are the same torches of freedom. Now, a woman with a cigarette in her hand has become equal to a man. Since then, the number of smokers in America has grown by more than 30%, but even that was not enough. Addiction. Once again, fate smiled upon Philip Morris. Back then, an article was published saying that smoking without a filter was harmful. Men started to worry about their health. Still, they were ashamed to smoke women's cigarettes. While other competitors were convincing people that their filter was safe, Philip Morris focused on ideas, feelings, and emotions. That's how Marlboro became Masculine Cigarettes. It was the most successful marketing move in history. Marlboro Man became a lifestyle, not just a product. The entire Philip Morris marketing campaign was aimed at showing that a cigarette is a must-have attribute of a successful person. They were advertised by actors such as Marilyn Monroe, businessmen, influential figures such as Ronald Reagan. Smoking was everywhere, in movies and even in cartoons. And cut. All right, this cigarette tastes like fucking shit. In 1954, 45% of the American population, which is about 80 million people, smoked cigarettes. That meant that if you and your family consisted of five people, two of them definitely smoked. Yes. We are talking about a mass murder, but the country also benefited from it. After all, the tobacco industry paid huge taxes. A pack of cigarettes cost 23 cents, with the state getting 11 cents of that, which is almost half the price. What other market can pay such taxes? Therefore, it is not surprising that tobacco has always been and will be a huge source of state revenue. Propaganda. But then came 1964, the year that almost ruined the tobacco industry forever. This year, the U.S. Surgeon General's office released a sensational and shocking truth. Smoking leads to lung cancer and cardiovascular disease. A large-scale anti-tobacco campaign has been launched. For Philip Morris, it meant that half of America could stop killing itself, and thus, stop Philip Morris from making big profits. At that point, the company contacted a well-known marketer, John Gill, for help. He created a new strategy to raise doubts. Does smoking really have such a disastrous effect on health? Hmm, these methods are so simple that sometimes I think I could have come up with it myself, but I don't own a tobacco company. Moreover, they created tobacco research universities where they conducted lung cancer research but deliberately avoided linking it to smoking. That is, we are talking about cancer, but not about its direct connection with cigarettes. Like, look, even doctors advertise our cigarettes. It's no wonder that Philip Morris kept up its income level. Moreover, the article that made so much fuss had no impact on the company's revenue. Hypocrisy. 
However, upon realizing that the U.S. market was still risky, the company decided to enter the free market outside of the U.S. This is how Philip Morris International emerged. Abroad, Philip Morris uses the same schemes and moves as in America, and their popularity is growing rapidly. To ensure their stability in the U.S., Philip Morris decided to diversify. In 1985, they bought one of the largest grocery giants in the world, Kraft. This includes cookies, candy, drinks, and other food products. Thus, the company has become a leader and a monopolist in the food industry market. And it wasn't just for fun. With a rather ambiguous reputation, Philip Morris wanted to become more family-friendly. The combination of tobacco and sweets is another marketing ploy to bring even children into its target audience. The leaders of American tobacco companies developed dyes and flavors as an additive product for cigarettes and used them in children's drinks. This helped them increase sales. It seems that the machine of death called the tobacco industry cannot be stopped. But then an insider showed up. He dared to tell people the truth about cigarette manufacturers. It was a doctor, not strange, but Dr. Jeffrey Wigand. He spoke on the 60 Minutes talk show about the technology that makes people addicted, namely the addition of ammonia, arsenic, and lead to cigarettes. These elements can kill a person in an instant. Do you think the doctor is a superhero and saved the world? Unfortunately, Philip Morris wanted to make him guilty of disclosing a trade secret. His good and comfortable life turned into a nightmare. But he still achieved his goal. On November 23, 1998, Philip Morris and three other tobacco giants signed the Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement and pledged to pay 46 states more than $200 billion over 25 years. Now I understand why my grandfather has been smoking for so many years, and he is not the only one. There are millions of us because Philip Morris has made everything possible for this. However, the company has now announced that by 2030, they plan to stop producing cigarettes altogether. Has the company really started to care about people's lives? Mm, not really. Philip Morris ran a study that revealed that young people aged 18 to 30 were their main customer. A young client requires an innovative approach. Therefore, the company created new conditions for me and my friends. Yes, we are talking about electronic cigarettes. Once the company realized the prospects, it radically changed its strategy, which is called smoke-free. I know what you're thinking. It's the same as a drug dealer opening a rehabilitation clinic. To prevent you from feeling that way, Philip Morris rebranded the company in the USA. Now it is Altria, which means pure, ideological in Latin. The corporation is focused on creating a substitute for cigarettes with safe analogs, such as IQOS and Juul. You can't smoke cigarettes because it's harmful to your health, but it's okay to take a long inhale of Juul because it's much less harmful. The world has already seen something similar when dealing with filters. And following the old tradition, Philip Morris International and Altria are creating universities to study respiratory diseases and find ways to overcome them. They recently bought out Vectora Group and are working together to help people with asthma and lung disease. Young people. This is how Philip Morris kills its best customers. First, convince everyone that cigarettes are not harmful and maybe they are even good for you. Use propaganda to encourage more people to smoke. Also, force it down people's throat, lie, and pay high taxes. Make young people addicted to smoking, the ones who will be loyal to your brand until the day they die. And most importantly, make money.